So Burton, uh, I guess the first thing I'd like to ask you about is that this is not just a tourist attraction. It's actually based on uh, research that the museum is doing on bats. Can you tell me a little bit about what that research is? Uh, yeah, well, at the ROM we uh, look at uh, species diversity. So we're trying to find, find out how many species of bats there are and where they're found. Uh, so there are some bats in the Caribbean that are only found on the islands in the Caribbean. Uh, so those are sort of interesting and special bats. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we went down to uh, St. Clair Cave in Jamaica uh, to find out what species are found there. Uh, and uh, so the back cave of the ROM is based on the real St. Clair Cave in Jamaica. Gotcha. So what you're doing is recreating uh, an experience that you had. So everybody that comes here to the back cave is going through the exact same cave you've gone through. Yeah. Yeah. The, the real cave, uh, St. Clair Cave, is three kilometers long. Uh, so we don't have three kilometers of cave here, <laughs> so we just have a very short part of it, uh, but there are actual sections of the cave in Jamaica that are replicated, that we've recreated at the ROM. Okay. Now, are what we're seeing in here, are they real bats? Uh, are they rubber bats? Uh, uh, in, inside the, the bat cave itself, uh, they're all modeled bats, so they're just made out of plastic. Okay. Uh, some of them are actually um, wax or plasticine uh, models. Uh, there are a few uh, specimens, there's 20 specimens uh, out in the in introductory area that are uh, taxidermy mounted specimens. Gotcha. Um, but there is about 800 uh, plastic model bats in the actual bat cave exhibit in the ROM. Wow. And not just bats. Uh, I noticed that you have a no number of models of insects, uh, other cave dwelling creatures. Uh, yeah, so inside the cave um, there are a lot of invertebrate organisms, so uh, a lot of uh, beetles. Uh, there are spiders, there are crabs, uh, there are crickets, uh, so we also have those. Um, they're in the cave, but they're harder to see because they're small, uh, so it's, uh, sometimes it's also a bit of a uh, you know, treasure hunt to find out if you can find all the different organisms beside the bats in there. Okay, and um, uh, the floors I noticed are absolutely covered in insects. Uh, was this the experience you had in the cave? Did you? What was that like walking through a place that was that had such a living floor? Yeah. So uh, in some parts of the cave, deep inside, uh, there's literally a carpet of uh, primarily cockroaches. There are a lot of other insects there, but there are some sections that are just like literally a wave of moving cockroaches. So that is obviously a little bit creepy, especially <laughs> when it's in the dark. Uh, but that's that's how they make a living. Right. And, and how did you how did you deal with that? I mean, walking through the cave, were you stepping on these bugs? Is it just you know? I, I mean, did you make any effort to try to get past them without doing so? Or uh, well, it's amazing that these cockroaches they scatter pretty fast. So I didn't <laughs> even have to try to not step on them because they're moving out of the way even before I'm you know two steps away from them. Gotcha. So it's not quite like Indiana Jones where you're crunch, crunch, crunch. Yeah, well, along. yeah, they're not crawling up at me. They're getting away from me, <laughs> yeah. uh, luckily. Um, but they're not. I'm not stepping on them either. Oh. Now I noticed that while you were down there, you got the opportunity to actually examine some of the bats. You've held bats in your hand. What is that like to actually have a, a to, to hold a bat in your hands? Uh, well, it's pretty cool. Uh, so we put up mesh nets to catch the bats, um, but we have to take them out, so we just sort of untangle them. Uh, and we take you know standard measurements to identify them, uh, like forearm length for size. Uh, and then we take pictures of them, okay. um, but after that we just let them go and they just fly off and do their thing, eat insects. Right. But how does it feel? I mean, are, are bats very warm in your hand? Are um, they furry? They don't, um, they're furry, um, and most bats are very small, so they don't really feel warm. Um, but they'll be, you know, flapping their wings, trying to get away, so that the first few times you do that, that feels a bit odd. Uh, but, you know, they're just obviously scared of you because you're this great big thing and you're holding it. Um, and it's sort of a bit, you know, unnerving the first time when you're moving your hand, and of course, you know, they want to bite you out of self-defense, so you have to be careful when you're holding them. Um, but after that, um, they're just interesting to look at, and when I take them out, I'll look at their facial features and uh, help to identify what they are. Okay. Now, this is um, a relaunch of the Bat Cave. How long has the original Bat Cave been here? Uh, the original Bat Cave opened up in 1988. Uh, so it's been over 20 years, um, so it's one of the most popular exhibits at the ROM, so it got a little bit worn out by all the kids that have gone through, so it needed a little bit of upgrading, a little bit, a little bit of refurbishing, but we've also added some new elements also, okay. uh, like this introductory wall uh, behind me looking at the, the cultural 
references to bats uh, over the years. Mm. And um, uh, the, the bat cave has sort of developed a, a reputation over the years. Am I correct in thinking that some people just won't go through? Uh, well, some kids are scared uh, to go through the bat cave. Um, I mean, it is sort of dark. There is lighting, um, but it is a little bit creepy because uh, there is sort of background noise, dripping water, and flapping bats. So it can be a little bit eerie and spooky inside. Now, you were involved when the first bat cave was created. What was the response like back then? Uh, the response back then was uh, great, and it's been great ever since. Um, so people always ask, you know, uh, they'll come in and say, where's the bat cave? So, you know, word of mouth has gotten around, so it's, it's always been very popular. Mm -hmm. And um, now, you, in the opportunity of adding a new section to the bat cave, you also have sort of enhanced, I guess, the technology that's used inside the cave? Uh, yeah, so one thing that was missing from the original bat cave was a video component. Uh, so that was one of the main objectives uh, of our trip down to Jamaica last month. Uh, was to get video footage, and uh, there's a, a video screen at the end of the back cave uh, that uh, essentially is a field diary of that uh, of the field trip to Jamaica. Okay, and I noticed that there's um, a sign that lets people know that there are cameras recording people while they're in the exhibit. Uh, yes, sir. So there are security cameras. Um, you know, so we you know we don't want people stealing any of the plastic bats that are hanging uh, from the cave. Okay. Uh, but also because it's dark, uh, we also want to make sure that you know people are safe and nothing happens. And if something does happen, that we'll be able to see it in the security room. Okay. And is there um, a particular species of bat or uh, um, a feature of a bat that you like? Uh, well, there's one species of bat that's found in St. Clair Cave that we caught. It's called the ghost face bat. Mm -hmm. So it has this face that has all this weird stuff coming out from his face, uh, so that's where the name, because it sort of looks like it's not real, it's a ghost. Uh, so to me that was, uh, I guess, one of the more cooler bats that I caught in St. Clair County.